Hey everyone on YouTube, we have a few students who've been away early this week and last week and we've been working on titration so they may be a little bit confused as to what it is and how does the maths work. Well, titrations is a way of quantifying how much stuff you've got, uh, particularly if you don't want it to precipitate or you basically have everything in solution. So if something is a mass, say if I've got some salt dissolved in an amount of water, if I want to quantify how much stuff I've got in there, well, that's easy. I just boil off the water, have a, a, a solid left over, and I just weigh it. And if I know the molecular mass or the molar mass, I could just do the maths and find out how many moles I needed. Or by precipitating it out, so you would uh, use your solubility tables, find out something that will actually make another bit that you want to find out precipitate. So when we did the barium chloride, uh, we were trying to isolate the sulfate, particularly the sulfur. Um, so we know that barium sulfate will precipitate out and that enabled us to let it settle to the bottom. We could decant it off, we could filter the remaining mass and dry it and then weigh it. And from there we can find out how many moles we had and then work backwards to find out well, how many uh, how many grams did we have in our original um, you know, bit of fertilizer. But when you've got things in solution, say like acids or bases, you can't always just dissolve it out. Like uh, you can't just evaporate off the solid and figure out what it is from the solid left over. So the second best thing we can do is we can do volumetric analysis. And that is to do with how much volume of something else do I need to add to this precise volume of my unknown to fully react? And we do this with acid ba acids and bases. The good thing about acids and bases is that we can add an indicator which will change color at a certain pH range. If you choose the right pH, if you choose the right indicator for the right pH range where the titration curve occurs, then you can identify when the equivalence point is. The equivalence point is the point where the moles of acid is equal to the right number of moles of base. So when you do your chemical equation, you'll find a molar ratio between your ingredients, between your reactants and products. That's the establishing point. So if you've got the right moles to moles of your ingredients, then that will be your equivalence point. The end point is when the indicator changes color. 